This year's Piazza project, Outside the Lines by Briny Roberts Studio, is part of the High's multi-year initiative to activate the Piazza. This year's project, I think, is really special because it really gets at the High's project towards inclusivity. And part of the way that the designer was able to do this was by working with various community groups um, and working with these advocates um, and self-advocates um, with disabilities and neurodiversity issues um, really gets at, again, what we are trying to do here at the museum. And I think that's part of the reason why this project is so, is so special. Um, and that's because she really worked and collaborated with these various groups in order to create not only a visually beautiful work, but also something that is um, tactily challenging um, and interesting for not just people with disabilities, but everyone. Some of the partners were groups that the museum had existing relationships with, and some were, were new partners for the museum. And the goal was really to find organizations and also individuals who could speak to sort of the full range of experiences of people with physical disabilities as well as developmental disabilities. And from the perspective of self-advocates as well as parents, families, doctors, um, experts. So basically there was a phase in the late fall, I believe, when I just did a, a bunch of interviews. So for me, that's, I think, the best way of really learning from people and trying to understand their perspective. Um, and that's something I try to do in most of my projects, to sort of learn from the people who will use the space. So in addition to the Center for Visually Impaired, um, we had Dr. Clayman from the Marcus Autism Center, some of the parents from Parent to Parent of Georgia, the Eric Jacobson from the Georgia Council on Developmental Disabilities. And the, the project actually, the signage was created in collaboration with Georgia Tech because they have a special lab that creates sort of communications material. I think it's the Center for Inclusive Design and Innovation. Based on conversations that the designer had with the various community groups, she decided to design the project with two zones, um, a quiet zone and a social zone. So what we see here is one of these more quiet zones. Um, and it is a quiet zone because it's kind of out in the open, so you understand where you are and that you also can see that there's only kind of one platform here and there's only one mesh seating here. And so you, as the user, can kind of see everyone around you and that was very intentional. And so this is the more social zone and you can see how the kind of forest of ribbons, how they just multiply in this space. And then you can also see how um, there are just, there's much more seating here. In a way, this is a space for congregation, for chatting, for playing. Um, and if you come when there's, a, there's um, a, a lot of children around, you will see that they are all kind of in this space and it's because there's just, there's just more here. Um, and this is the way that the designer intended for this space to be used and it is actually being used in this way. Our hopes and desires, at least on, on the museum's level, is that people are able to see this, right? That this is not something that um, we are imposing on you, but we really want you to come and experience it in a way that you see fit, right? I firmly believe in this concept of open-ended play, and I think a project like this, where there are kind of no rules, um, allows for people to come and you know, have lunch on one of the hard seats or um, be able to uh, appreciate the kind of forest of strands in any way that you see fit. Um, so it's a, it's a project that allows for a kind of free exploration and I think that that's probably the most important um, aspect of, uh, of play really. Um, and in terms of kind of community engagement, um, which is again something that the museum really advocates for, this is a model project.